Hey everyone, Astrid here. In today's tutorial, we are going to build a landing page hero using the power of Figma Auto Layout. The first thing I need to do is create a frame that is going to be 1440 pixels by 920, and then add guides 100 pixels from each side. Next, I'm going to add the background image that I already have here. I want the face to be on the right side of the hero, so I'm simply going to move it to the right and add a rectangle to the background. It will perfectly blend with the image once I match the color with the eyedropper. You can press I to use the eyedropper tool. I also want to add an overlay layer with the pink gradient effect. I duplicate the layer and bring it to the front and instead of a solid fill, I'm going to use a pink gradient. By moving these rectangles, I can change the direction of the gradient. Select the top left color and change the opacity to zero. And select the bottom right color and change the color to pink. Now I just need to change the blend mode to multiplied and this creates a cool effect for our background. Before moving on, I'm going to group my background layers. And then rename them and lock them by clicking on the padlock. This way we can keep things organized. So it's going to be hero background and then just click on the padlock. I already have a logo, so I'm just going to place it here. Now I'm go going to create the menu items, work, about, and contact. So the fill color is going to be white. The font is going to be man rope. And it's going to be a regular or maybe medium and then 16 pixels and then 24 pixels for the line height. So I have work. This is going to be about and then finally contact. Once I have all three menu items, I'm going to put them right next to each other with no padding and I'll show you why in a minute. I also need two buttons. One will be client access and the other one is going to be a call button with a phone number. I can do this by duplicating one of my menu items and instead of having a separate element for the background, I'm going to add auto layout to the text. This allows me to choose a fill color that will be the background of our button. So I can choose here, I can change from white to this color that I have right here. I'm also going to change the border radius to 50 pixels so the background is completely rounded. By clicking this icon in the middle, I make sure that everything is centered. So I'm going to add 16 pixels of padding on top and bottom and 32 to the sides. And actually, I'm going to change this to 8 pixels. Perfect. I'm also going to grab an icon and paste it right next to the text inside the button. It's very easy to do if you just select the text and press Ctrl or Command V. Auto layout makes sure that the padding remains the same. And now I can change the spacing between the text and the icon by changing the value here in spacing between items. So that's going to be eight pixels. For the next button, I'm simply going to duplicate the first button and change the look of it. But before that, let me change the text of our first button. Because we are using auto layout, the button will automatically resize to fit the text inside of it. Now, the second button is going to be a call button. So let me just add our fake phone number here. And then I'm also going to replace the icon that is right next to it. So I'm just going to copy and paste our phone number or our phone icon just like I did with the previous one. I'm just going to delete this one, Command C or Control C, and then select the text and Command V or Control V. Now I'm going to make sure that the padding is 
the way I want it, which is eight pixels. So it's correct. And then get rid of the fill and change it to a stroke. So it's going to be a pink two pixel stroke. Perfect. All right, now that we have our two buttons, we have our three menu items and our logo, it looks like we have all the elements of our header. So I'm just going to remove the padding between the two buttons and do exactly the same with the three menu items. Now, if I select everything, I'm just going to make sure everything's aligned. And now select everything and apply auto layout. Now I'm going to go to this icon right here and that with that, I make sure that everything's aligned vertically. Next, I'm going to change this from packed to space between. And what this will do is that if I decide to resize the entire header, the elements will stay within the same distance from each other. Now, the problem is I want the two buttons to be closer to each other. So to fix that, I'm going to select both and apply another auto layout. This is called auto layout nesting. This allows me to change the distance between these two buttons without affecting the padding of the other elements. I'm going to do exactly the same with my menu item. Select all three and apply auto layout one more time. Now I can reduce the space in between items to 48 pixels. And then if I select the entire header, I can resize it and the elements inside of it will stay the same. So our header is pretty much done. But before moving on to the H1 section, I'm going to rename this to header. So for the next section, I already know that I want to use auto layout. So for the text to work, it cannot have a fixed width. So let me just type this here and change the color to white just so I can see it. And this is going to be imagine the possibilities. Imagine the possibilities. All right. So I'm just going to change this to 80 pixels, align it with the logo, and then multiply 8 by 13 right here. And that gives us a line height of 104. Then I have my gradient here that I already created, but it's basically just three colors that I'm using just like with the logo. So it's a linear gradient and I just need to choose three colors and then I edit and just move them anywhere I want. And finally, I'm going to change the weight to bold and the font to open sans. And font here, I'm just going to make sure that everything's aligned. And then I'm going to duplicate this section for our H2. Just change that font size to 24, the line height to 32. The font weight is going to be probably regular and then change the color to white. But I have to change that to solid first. So it's going to be white. And then I'm just going to move it all the way to the left. The last element of our hero is going to be a CTA button. So again, instead of creating a new one, I'm just going to duplicate this one from the header and paste it right below the H2. Now, I want this button to be slightly different. I want it to be a little bigger because it's our CTA and it's a little more important. So I'm just going to change the pattern here to 16, top and bottom and 48 on the sides. I also don't want an icon, so I'm just going to click on the icon and get rid of it. And also I need to change this text to start free trial. Now that our button is good to go, the last thing I need to do is apply auto layout to these three elements. I'm going to select each one by holding shift and then add auto layout. At this point, if you select the text box and resize it, Everything should adapt to the other element's height and keep the same distance from each other. All I need to do is change this H1's alignment to the left and it should be good to go now. If I decided I wanted to add more text here, I can easily do that and everything else will adapt to its size. Finally, I'm going to change the vertical padding of the elements with the help of a nested auto layout one more time. 
This will allow me to have the H1 and H2 closer together and a larger spacing between the H2 and the button. So I added auto layout here and then I can change this padding to 12 so my H1 and H2 are closer to each other. And by selecting the frame that contains both my H1 and H2, I can go here and change the button padding to 24. So that will make the button be a little more farther apart from my H1 and H2. And now all of our elements are in place. So there we have it. This is our finished hero created with the help of Figma's auto layout. So we have all of our elements, but let me just move this slightly down and this is our final result. If you enjoyed this content and would like to see more Figma tutorials, like this video and subscribe to my channel so I can continue making more content like this.